Hey guys, Anthony Chimiro here, director and financial strategist from Code Finance uh, on the online uh, online prosperity show with Prosper. Uh, we're going to be talking everything about financial literacy, uh, what my journey is in my career, what I've done in my previous history, and what is happening and what my goals are in future. Welcome to the Online Prosperity Show, a podcast that's dedicated to empowering individuals and providing financial literacy for a prosperous future. I'm your host, Prosper Tarovinga, and today I have a special guest who embodies the spirit of taking risks and making a difference in the world of finance and fitness. Anthony, how are you doing, my man? Very well, very well. Thank you for having me on the show. Absolutely. The pleasure is all mine. I think we're going to be in uh, in financial gym today, right? <laughs> <laughs> and and finance all at the same time. For those that are watching uh, the episode and meeting uh, Anthony for the first time, I think you are not going to be able to see the guns that he brings to the show. But um, he's the founder of uh, Code Finance, a renowned finance broken business, co-owner of Fitness Cartel, Keeper Ring, that's based in Brisbane. And he is the author of a four book series that we're going to be talking about that's designed for kids. Okay, so please join me in welcoming Anthony. Um, and um, yeah, let's... Uh, you know, hear his side of the story. Now, Anthony, we're going to be talking a lot of stuff about uh, finance. What what sort of disclaimer have you got um, for our audience before we get started? Yeah, thanks, Prosper. Thanks for having me. So I um, I'll give this one. Look, it's all general, all the advice. There's no advice here. We're only just giving general um, facts by nature. Um, obviously, it doesn't uh, go to anyone's personal circumstance. So we're only just talking very high level stuff here. Absolutely. Well, so if you get triggered, annoyed, or just outright frustrated, me and Anthony have got nothing to answer for. We're <laughs> just having fun here. And uh, yeah, just really talking uh, amongst men uh, about finances, kids, and journeys that we have had. Right now, Anthony, thank you so much for being here today. Now, your journey is truly inspiring you know from leaving a high paying job to venturing into the finance and uh, fitness industry to really making a positive impact can you tell us a little bit more about your motivation to improve financial literacy especially for the future generations yeah of course thanks prosper so i um i actually came up with the idea for the kids book when my son was almost born and i was looking for books to actually um buy for him to teach in a fun, engaging way about finance on a very basic nature. I couldn't find anything. And my history being over 10 years in finance in a range of different um, uh, roles, so, you know, financial planner, business banker, private bank, and, um, you know, obviously back in the day fitness, but that's that's very, very well old. And I found when I was dealing with, you know, people, financial literacy was a massive gap. The, there's two reasons why I created this book was because one is to improve the foundation of financial literacy for kids because there's a big gap and I want to close that gap for kids. Really get this into schools because at school they don't teach finance. What I've found in my history in my career is that I found that even adults, you know, at, we're all we all got our own sweet spots and specialties, what we know, but that financial literacy gap is still not up to terms and and if you look at the statistics, you know, on some, um, you know, saying that 75% of Australians are financially literate, what does that actually mean? You know, how how much basic understanding do they have of finance? Obviously, no, you know, maybe what accounts are and all that, but what is offset? What is interest rates? What are their expenses? What are their, what are, you know, what income do they receive in net and gross figures? So all this stuff comes into play. And with the book is something I want to build out to help improve that foundation and, and you know close the gap. Absolutely, absolutely, and good on you for really taking, um, you know, center stage uh, in doing this and starting with the people while they are still young. Now, I just have this question: if we are going to be dealing with 
maybe borrowing taxes and everything else that um you know sort of happens in our day to day life what why do you think this is not actually stuff that we're taught in in the schools yeah it's it's interesting concept i mean you know we're taught in school languages economics on a on a i guess how to calculate share prices and, and business and that. Um, we're taught religions, you know, the, all the good stuff, but finance is something that you do with day to day. Why it's not t- taught? Because when kids leave school, they just get a job, they get a credit card or a debit card or both, and they just go spending. Um, yeah, I, I, look, I don't really know why it's not in the curriculum. And my goal for this book is to really get into schools and you know, do speaking events where I'm teaching kids about simple cash flow, simple expenses. You know, I've created a worksheet for kids that's interactive. So, you know, the worksheet has got a whole bunch of food. So you got a lunchbox in the middle, a whole bunch of food pictures around the lunchbox. And you start with a budget, what you've spent and what you've left over with. And the kids actually point into the lunchbox. I've done it with my niece and nephew and uh, my son's only two, so he doesn't know yet. Um, but I've done it with friends, kids and they're actually now starting to ask mum and dad, hey, mum, are you spending, you know, $3 on an apple or whatever for my lunch? It's starting that conversation, starting to get intrigued and curious. That's what I really want to do with the book and the worksheets and doing those seminars. Absolutely. And congratulations for taking a bold step. I mean, we're living in a world where people are so disconnected to their health, to their wealth, and even the relationships that they actually have. We have social media purporting as the one thing that connects people to to being social, yet we are at the very least of words, so disconnected with what we uh, have. Now, this is something that maybe you may not have uh, thought or not have uh, foreseen. Do you think you might be facing a bit of resistance when it comes to uh, you showing up to these schools and, um, you know, trying to teach people things that um, they can't even teach their kids on, on the dinner table? Uh, I'm going to say a big yes. And I'll say this with proof and I won't say the school. So there was one time I went out to see a school and I actually brought the book. When I went to speak to them, I, I kid you not, I was a principal and in Melbourne. I spoke with them and I presented the book and I said, look, I really want to get this into schools and I'm wanting to offer my free service. Like I'm not, you don't have to pay me for it. I'm giving you my time. If it's an hour or it's during lunch or after school, you know, get a whole bunch of kids in and do these exercises. The book is just a proof to say that, hey, there's something else that we can give that's tangible, um, but also worksheets I've created that can help out. The principal looked at me and said, no, curriculum's full. And I went, okay and the way i got told that it's full was like not interested um one thing about me prosper i don't care how many knows i get i'll keep pushing because finance and financial literacy is something that's very passionate to me i don't understand why schools don't teach it it's starting to be taught on different levels um like there's good programs out there um given that i've dealt with personal finance for over 10 years you know, there's there's other things. So look, that's that's where I want to be involved and and really try to help out because again, when kids leave school, everything's on a card. They don't know what the actual concept of money is. It's all about instant gratification. Just like you said, social media, everything's boom, 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 straight away. No one understands. Okay, to buy a house, you need to save money, and then the government puts this scheme in place that, you know, a first home buyer scheme that I don't really believe in. To be honest, it doesn't teach kids or our younger generation as to how to save, how to spend. Um, yeah, they're just simple things that I've, I've sort of come to terms with. Absolutely. Well, a lot of people have a lot of safety nets around them, but some of them are some some are taking those safety nets and turning them into hammocks. And yeah. um, I, I can foresee, you know, a, you know, a lot of carnage coming through uh, in the next coming years when, you know, the the markets start to rebalance themselves in the way that yeah, they have yeah. done. But I, I'm really intrigued in the way that you take on challenges because um, you're not a person to hear no for an answer. You know, you in the past took a significant step and actually went on and sold your family home to pursue your dreams in finance and in fitness. Now, what led you to actually make that courageous decision and how did that shape your path moving forward? 
Yeah, so I um, uh, you know, good, really good salary, being really comfortable, and the family home. I looked at it as you know, in debt, and I and I've got it on social media on my platforms that you know I say it how I worked it out. I looked at it and I go, you know what? I ten years ago I had a dream, and my dream was to open up a gym. Sorry, actually, I'll take a step back. As a kid, about four years ago, five years ago, I actually turned into a goal, and I said, I'm going to get a gym. Every time I went to buy an existing gym, a you know start a new gym, and I spoke to every brand in Australia, um, they kept saying no because I didn't have the money. Fair enough. And probably lucky like that because COVID happened. So what actually um, I did was I looked at my figures personally and I went, you know what? Again, this is not advice. It's just me personally. I'm showing what, what I've actually probably done. Was that I looked at the value of my house, looked at my debt and gone, okay, how do I look at buying a fitness center? How do I get into it? It's backing my head against the wall. And I got that many no's. And to me, that's fine. I'll just keep going. My wife turned around to me one day and said, what if you don't find a like a way to buy a gym? I said, there's a 1% chance in Australia that I'll find it. You mark my words, I'll find it. And I did. The way I, I, I did get a chance to buy into it was um, Fitness Cartel um, not needed assistance, but just, I guess, uh, needed help just with the, the, the banking system and how it worked and to provide finance. It just needed a bit more push, a bit more uh, assertiveness to be done. And... Um, you know, I got finance cross for him for um, opening two sites. And then we started talking about, you know, did you want to join forces and, and open up one together? And I said, in my head, if he hears this, he'll, he'll, he'll laugh. But in my head, I said, where do I sign? Which that wasn't the case. There was all negotiations with shareholders agreements and that. And the amount of money that I put into it, I went, where can I get it from? I just said, I believe in myself and my passion. I've got a gut feel that I can make more money from buying into this health club or this business, comparing it to relying on the one sole asset to pay, uh, to, to grow at the same rate. At the same time, um, I was sort of getting annoyed with the financial planning industry and working for someone I had more drive and passion and really wanted to help people. And every time I worked for someone, I felt like I had more drive and ambition compared to my managers. And that's not a bad onus on them, but just I had a bit more in me. Um, as you can probably hear. So I took the big step and went, you know what? If I can pull this off both at the same time, I'm going to do it. I'm going to have a crack. And I've got the full support of my wife. You know, credit to her. She put a lot of trust in me. And that's what allowed me to, obviously we had our firstborn Kingston and allowed me to do the two things I, I wanted to do was open up a gym and start my own firm, which is the brokerage firm. And really, the brokerage firm was a bit different why I opened it. I opened it because I didn't like the way brokers dealt with clients. That cash flow conversation something that, again, you can hear the passion out of it. And that's why I created the book. You know, a lot of brokers, and I'm not speaking for all, but some go here, Mr. Client, fill out all these paperwork. That's not their job. That's our job as, as finance brokers or finance specialists. We just don't go into conversation saying, you need a half a million dollars refinance. I want to know why you need it what the reason is, how are we going to pay down the debt, how are we going to get out of it? So it's really understanding their background. So I know I've thrown a few different things, but yeah, that, that's a, a bit about why I started it and how I got into it. Absolutely. Now, for us, all that you're throwing is remarkable because at the end of the day, some people just see the finished product. They don't quite see what was happening behind the scenes um, as to how you, you know, brought this all together and kudos for you having relationships, um, especially that of your wife for supporting you while you are uh, going through, but on, people can only support what they believe in. And yeah. they, she wouldn't have supported you if she didn't see uh, the hunger that you have uh, inside of that. And speaking of hunger, you have a uh, motto where you say live life like, you know, you've got a camera following you at all times. And, um, you know, you use this to encourage individuals to be the hero of their own story. Now, how does adopting this sort of mindset impact your own first personal growth and maybe your financial success now? Yeah, so, um, and Joe Rogan really speak about it. And it was it was good. And I listen to a lot of podcasts and audio books and, and everything. That's how I got my sort of mindset. So um, how it helped me out was 
I'm the account, I'm I'm accountable for what I need, what I want to achieve. The person that is, um, it, like if I have a goal in mind and I need to reach it, I'm the only person I need to rely on. No one else, you know. Um, that's one part. This the second part is, you know, I'll give you I'll give you another another part to it. Everything you do in life, you do it to the best capabilities you have. So, for example, the simplest things. The way you do one thing is the way you do all. So simple things make a big difference. So like this, let's say you go to Coles, right, or Woolworths, and there's a trolley that is not in there. I don't know if they're like the where they stack them all, the trolleys. They people throw them out in a the car park. They you know put them in front of other cars. I'm a bit of a weird person. I actually grab those trolleys or a trolley, and I'll go to my way to grab it and put it into the the stacking part. Yeah. yeah. All those little things come back to that mindset of, hey, you know what? If a camera was following you all the time, how would you perceive yourself? How would you be the the hero of your story? Those little things have helped me do the bigger things. But how you do all things, how you do one thing is how you do all things. No matter the how small the, the detail is, to the big things is, you know, when my son grows up, I want him to be proud of his dad to say he took a risk, but he was accountable to what goals he wanted to achieve. And look at me and say, you know what? I could do the same thing. So I lead by example. That's legacy that I want to provide my son and my wife and, you know, hopefully my future kids. Um, yeah, that that is essentially what, what I want to achieve. Absolutely. Because how you do anything is how you do everything. You know, you can't just be nice to the waiter at the restaurant while you're yelling at, um, you know, maybe the the bus boy or the janitor or things of yeah. that nature. And some people say you actually measure the credibility of somebody by how they treat people that, you know, have no benefit to them. All right. So I, I quite like that sort of outlook. And now I see why you've taken this next step of really uh, being involved in the financial literacy of not only your kids, and the kids that are coming through, but th you know the future sort of um, generation to to come through. Now you've put together the book Ace and Chica's Wild Money Trails. The first one is on borrowing. Tell us a little bit of a rundown of what um, parents can actually expect in this uh, borrowing book. Yeah, so without the reason... giving out the whole farm. Yeah. <laughs> it's a hard one. It looks, it's a short story, but I'll, I'll give it to you like this. So when I see clients and I like what you said before, I don't treat anyone different, whether they're a CEO of a multi-billion dollar company or first time buyers, everyone's the same. So treat everyone with respect, no matter what title they have. It doesn't matter. We're all the same. The reason, so this book borrowing. So I wanted to teach kids in a fun, engaging way as to what borrowing and how, sorry, how borrowing works from a simplistic point of view and how security works. So, you know, if you're providing, if you're getting a loan from, I'm trying not to give too much away, but if you're giving a loan, if a bank's giving you a loan, they want some sort of security, which the security is a house, right? So the bank's giving you a loan because they're taking the house. They're essentially buying it off you. They own it. That is how finance or how borrowing works. So they're getting collateral or security for providing you the amount of money that you require. I wanted to teach on a very basic level, but again, it's about my two dogs. And again, it's a, it's a fun, engaging way to get kids to start thinking. And I've got the next books on investing. Then the one after is about tax. So the one about investing teaches kids about the share market. Disclaimer, it's a, it's, it's hard to do it in a fun, engaging way, but it's showing how the share market goes up and down the tax book which is coming out obviously that's a third version our third series uh is showing what is tax used for and then the fourth one's about savings now the fourth one just teaches kids about how expenses and income works so again all in a fun engaging way it's actually about my my dog and my brother's dog i've got blue staffy and my brother's got the brother of my dog so i've got my one's chica and in the book it shows the two actual dogs then me and my wife and my son it's got pictures in the back so um yeah it, it that that's why I, I i created it and everything i do in life now is what i want to do for fulfillment so i bought a gym because i love health because to me health is wealth on a physical and mental standpoint 
I want to teach people about finance and bridge that gap for financial literacy. So that's why I started the brokerage business, get people into debt, but help them get out of debt and have the right structure. The book is to, again, bridge that gap for future generations because, again, Prosper, as we're aware, they're our future leaders. So we want to make sure they're making the right decisions and they have good foundations to start with. Absolutely. It all starts with the, with the younger generation. Absolutely. I'm, I'm sold. I've got two kids of my own and, um, you know, I can't even get them to eat breakfast in the morning. So I'm hoping <laughs> if I'm going to be teaching them financial literacy, I'm going to need the muscles that you have uh, in terms of that book. Now, you, you're touching up on very interesting subjects because um, there's three things that keep people poor and there's three things that actually enrich and, and make people wealthy. And those things are debt taxes and knowledge. And you've touched up on all of them because the debt is all about borrowing. If you borrow and buy do that, then obviously that's, that's, um, you know, um, you know, money that's just lost. And if you uh, don't know how to utilize the, the taxes in order to put yourself in an advantage, that will actually put you, um, you know, in a detriment. And also if you ha don't have the knowledge that you have, um, you know, or the financial literacy to literally create that foundation to create wealth, then obviously all that, you know, would be for naught. So in the context of what you are sort of um, teaching these kids, are these concepts easy for kids to sort of grasp? Or because even older people don't even know how to channel these things, you know? Yeah. Yeah, look, it, it is. And like I'll go on a tax one. So the tax book, it's it teaches kids what tax is used for. So it doesn't teach them how to use it. It's, you know, if you want to talk, read the tax act, you'll fall asleep. Um, but you know, and it's probably it's this thick. So the the book on tax just teaches kids what tax is actually used for. If you go to a normal kid now and to ask, what do you think tax is used for? They won't have a slightest clue. Um, not even some adults, but I want to teach kids what it's used for because if you can teach them the basics and understand what things are used for and the context of why it's happening, then when they start getting older, then I say, oh, okay, the tax is used to fix the road or to clean the streets. You know, that's a basic understanding. And like the book's targeted probably, I would say, three and up. The worksheet's probably targeted at more um, maybe nine and ten. can be earlier, but again, you know, it, it purely depends um, on knowledge level. But yeah, it, it's understand what it's used for first. How do you then use it in your context, and then you and then using that to your strength, um, that gives you real freedom and understanding. You know that the reason why there's so much divorce is obviously things happen, but finance is such a big thing. And I want to touch on debt. Yes, I provide lending, but lending gives you ability to leverage on assets, and I don't let people borrow for consumables. It's all on assets. Absolutely. And um, yeah, that's that's really interesting because then they are, you know, leveraging on the good debt instead of the bad debt, which is bringing nothing else but a bill. Now, how can people get a hold of these uh, books uh, or the first book and also the series of books that are coming through? Yeah, so um, I've got a website. So if you look up codefinance.com.au, there's a, there's a tab at the top that says Ace and Chica. Click on that and it's it shows a bit about why I've done it. It's got a video on, on why, again, why I produced it. And you actually click to order from there. So if you go to my website, codefinance.com.au, click the tab at the top, Ace and Chica. That will take you straight to the, um, the website where you can purchase the book and order now. The other thing, it's only got the borrowing one up there currently because that's the only one that's currently released. The investing um, should be up in the next... I guess, a couple of weeks to, to a month, um, but there's four to come. So this is one of four. So watch for this space. Fantastic. Now, obviously, Anthony, you know, your dedication to self-improvement is very evident. The way you speak, the way you show up. Um, so many people would just be thinking, oh, maybe I'll never be like that. You know, how do you actually believe that physical fitness, mental well-being, are sort of interconnected and how does this influence your approach to financial empowerment? Yeah. So um, I'll start on the physical part. So I've been training for 10 plus years, working in the fitness industry. And um, what I found at Log City, health is wealth. What I found throughout my training is your 
body can, and this will come to terms with this part, but your body can only push so far, your mental mindset takes over. So for a lifting standpoint, I used to lift a lot of weight from my height. I'm, I'm sort of short. And um, people say, hey, lift that way. I said, I always say to them, my body can only lift so much. My mindset takes the rest over. Like you look at Muhammad Ali, he would do any workout. He wouldn't even count the reps. He'd just go, I'll stop when it starts hurting or when I can't do anymore. That's sort of mindset I bring. And everything in life, I bring that mindset into everything else. So finance, you know, goal setting, uh, physical, mental appearance, you know, um, it's funny, like I, I remember when I used to supervise in, in corporate and I used to, there's this one guy that had such potential and I he used to come unshaven and, you know, I used to say to him, how do you go out? When you go out, you know, young guy, he was going out clubbing. I said, how do you go out? He goes, oh, I, I trimmed the beard and that. I go, so why aren't you doing that when you work in professional services? That's the sort of mindset I bring to a, a corporate offer. Like I like... I like things that, you know, you, your present, presentation is is definitely key and what drives you to get to that next level. Um, yeah, that, that's why I do what I do. Absolutely. And it just rings true what you said earlier on, how you do anything is how you do everything, you know. And um, last but not least, um, while I was looking through your stuff, I had, um, you know, the pleasure of uh, checking you out a little bit. I noticed you like the book Good to Great. Yeah, and it's it's one of your favorite books. Now, how has this book influenced your mindset and approach to uh, personal and professional growth? Yeah, so there's a concept in there that talks about, like I talk about businesses and how the business got from good to great businesses and how they last comparing to ASX or, sorry, the American Stock Exchange. There's one concept in there that really um, hit true to me is you got to put the right people on your bus. Now, I take that personally and professionally in my life. So in my personal circles, the right people I want on my bus because we all help each other out in a personal standpoint. Professional, same concept. If I'm going to hire staff or if I'm going to, like when I bought that that business or into that business, the 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 people that were on the bus were already really good. They, they knew the journey. They know what we are trying to achieve. We're all on the same route. If you have people that on, aren't on the right bus with you, then you got to kick them off. That's, I know it sounds sort of silly, but that's, I bring that to personal and professional life. I like to surround myself with um, the same sort of people that are really trying to push themselves and achieve success. Now, it doesn't have to be monetary, it can be mindset wise. So, David Goggins doesn't talk about, you know, money. He, he doesn't really enjoy it. He likes getting to the, the grind of things. And that's, that speaks true to me, you know. Money is a, a concept, but you really want to be able to be fulfilled because if you're just chasing income, you're not gonna you're not gonna be fulfilled in life. And that's I left that really high paying job to go down to nothing and put everything on the line to then be able to be fulfilled. Because what I did was was look at what I want to do in a day. I wrote it out. I want to be a gym owner. I want to own my finance business. I want to help people with money, improve financial literacy. What does that in turn look at? That's how it comes with what I do. Absolutely. And it's quite interesting that you've come full circle and you've achieved all your goals and uh, sort of um, now you are passing the elevator down, you know, sending the elevator down and helping the future generations to, you know, be, do and have a happier existence. And what I know about money is money gives you choices. And the more you actually start having and enjoying, you also need to be physically and mentally prepared for it to come because you might just get a windfall of money coming through in the lottery or something like that. And you know what always happens to people that are not fully prepared for, for that. Now, Speaking of lottery and just luck and things of that nature, Anthony, um, you're going to laugh at this, but somebody's probably sitting on their computer or watching this on their phone and they've rolled their eyes so far back they can see their breakfast now just thinking, ah, oh, these guys are crazy. I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about that. I wouldn't even care about teaching my kids about money because then, you know, what are schools for and things of that nature? What sort of advice would you give to a parent like that who has just got such a lackluster approach um, to hand-holding their kids to financial prosperity and all financial literacy? It's a tough question. Um, I've never actually got that before. But what I would say is, 
the world is looking at instant gratification. Like the person that won the lottery and hit the luck out of the draw, that's providing them instant gratification. So they're going to keep trying to get that hit. Um, I'll say this. With that lottery, they're probably going to keep buying consumables and, you know, not all of them like that, but some of them like that. The advice that I would give to them to provide their kids, how do you want your kids to live? What do you want them to be like when they get to your age? You know, if if you were sitting here and you were 85 years old and your kids are your age, if they're at a mid-age, call it, what would you want them to be like? You obviously care what your kids are going to be like. So what would you teach them how you want them to be like? Now, the kids make their own decisions as I'm starting to learn with my son, um, which is fine and great. But your job as a parent is to guide them through through life. They come to you for advice. Why wouldn't you help them out when they come to you for advice? That is absolutely amazing. And the more you do that, the quicker the um, the nesting starts to happen or when they leave the nest, um, it happens earlier and you can enjoy <laughs> the work that you've put together. But from what I'm hearing from you, man, it's it's been a tremendous, um, you know, um, episode here because you are really channeling who you want to become and who you have become. And you're putting that in full, simple to follow books that kids can also um, read at their own pace and with the help of their parents. Now, to the parents out there, um, you know, your life choices and your goals might not be what your kid wants, but there's something remarkable that happens when you impart knowledge uh, to kids, especially at a younger age. You know, they can be the things that you may not have been able to do yourself because in the age that we live right now, Anthony, you can attest to this, from 16 to 65, you can earn a wage. But from zero to 99, you can earn a profit. So wouldn't you want your kids to enjoy all that um, longevity that's actually afforded to them, you know, and um, Anthony has made it easy by writing it in four simple books that we can get um, in four easy payments if you are of that <laughs> uh, inclination. Now, Anthony, you've done it all now, man. Like, seriously, I'm... We're, we're, we're out of questions to ask you and, you know, looking ahead, you know, what sort of future goals and aspirations now can we expect? You've maxed it all out. You've went in, done the entrepreneurial route, even sold your house before, <laughs> you know, and, 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 you know, you've really achieved most of the things that you uh, want to achieve. And now you're an author and what, what's next on your mission, um, you know, to either improve financial literacy, improve, um, you know, health and wellness for people or just improve relationships for people? So a couple of things. I will say this is just the beginning, as I say to my wife, and she thinks I'm crazy. Um, I've got a lot more in me, and I really – the financial literacy part is a passion project. Again, it's not the money side. It's really providing that that gap for foundation to, I guess, uh, sorry, uh, reduce the gap in financial literacy. So really get this into schools, and like I've said, I'm wanting to get this into schools and actually talk and do seminars and workshops. But all the knowledge, I just want to be able to provide it. Um, that's one part of it. What other goals I have, where that takes me, I'm not too sure. But again, really focus on um, improving financial literacy. Like I said, you know, in my in my LinkedIn, I'll say I want to help a million people. That's a, indirectly and directly for health and, uh, sorry, uh, finance and fitness. Fitness part is you know, with the current site or, you know, the gyms that we've, well, I've got one gym, um, our current member base, you know, is really looking to improve their health and wealth. Well, health is wealth. I believe physical health translates into mental health. And, you know, I can only talk from experience. That really helped me out into what I'm trying to achieve from a finance sample because everything I had in the gym has helped me to, to really push and keep going and everything is on me. So, um, I have the support network that I have, but really excelling my 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 um, my speaking, you know, about financial literacy and fitness. Absolutely, and what you're showcasing right now is what I viscerally believe that we're here to live, we're here to learn, and we're here to contribute to live the best life. We need to learn all the lessons that are 
out there, be it physical, mental, spiritual, financial, and obviously you've done the homework and written it for six other kids in your class. And um, now you're contributing to future generations. So on behalf of humanity, thank you so much, man. No, thank you for having me, Pross. I really appreciate it. Um, no, it's been great. It's been great. Thank you for for taking an interest. I, like I said, I'm not the smartest guy, but I like to try and just push as much knowledge I have out there as much as possible. Oh, absolutely. Well, you, I took notice of what you were doing and not so many people are, can stand in your position and say, hey, I'm writing this for people that I don't even know. Some people write for, you know, like for their, their own benefit. Um, you, you're doing it for the goodness and the kindness of you. So thank you so much for sharing your incredible insights and experiences with us today. I mean, it's really, really clear that your dedication to empowering others and making a positive impact uh, really, really sets you apart. You're not doing this for instant gratification. You know, the kids that you're helping right now are, what, three-year-olds. By the time they get to the age to be able to pay you, you're probably not going to be around for that. So that is, sure. yeah, <laughs> that is something remarkable what you're doing. So to our listeners, please remember to set your goals Embrace uh, financial literacy and strive to be the heroes in your own story. I want you to join us next time on the Online Prosperity Show, where we continue to explore the keys to financial success and personal growth. Please help me to thank Anthony once again uh, for his time, expertise, and the journey that he's embarking on in order for him to help others be, do, and have a happier existence. Bye for now.